All right, friends, this is the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 7i Pro 14-inch touchscreen ultra portable 14-inch laptop. And I'm doing a full review here. It's going to be a little bit different than other full reviews because it's going to be very focused on use cases and like kind of the who is this for uh, answering that question but throughout the entire video. So here's the thing about this computer. This is a great way to bridge the gap between the 13-inch and the 15-inch laptops out there. So at 14 inches, it's obviously in the middle, but it retains the Lenovo, or rather the Intel Evo certification standards. So that means it has instant on, you can log in with biometrics, in this case it's Windows Hello Facial Recognition, and it's it has good battery life, you know, 10 plus hours, not too far above the 10. It kind of depends on what you do with it. Uh, but now, in addition to all of that, it also has some good powerful features, like the i7-11370H CPU, which is an overclocked uh, version of the 1165G7 that you can find in many of the popular ultra-portables, like the Dell XPS 13 or the Razorbook 13, which I just picked up as well. Now, the reason that I picked up the Razorbook 13 is they updated the keyboard, which was the only problem I had with the previous first-gen model, but... Also, there is an anti-glare reflection type coating on that uh, Razer book as well as the Dell that's not found here. So I'm going to do my very best to show you how that glare is a problem in this machine, but I also don't want this entire review to be a negative thing because that is really the only problem that I have with this laptop. So, okay, so here's what you get. You get a 14-inch touchscreen that's 2.8K in resolution. So it's a high-resolution uh, display, definitely more pixels than you would necessarily need on a 14-inch. And it's also capable of 90 hertz response, so or refresh. So that means things are a bit smoother. But, but here's the thing. I really thought the difference between 60 and 90 would be so big that 120 plus wouldn't be necessary because you see laptops with 120 or 144 and, and up. I thought, okay, let's at least get to, to 90. That's in fact what I said in my Carbon Gen 9 review. And uh, here we have a 90 hertz refresh, but I can't really tell the difference. Like a little bit, but not enough. Now I don't play games on this. I've got a desktop. Um, I'm get, going to get a Steam Deck. I've got a Switch. Like, I've got other ways to play video games, PC games I play in other forms. I don't want a, an ultra book to play video games. So if you want an ultra portable laptop to play video games, go look at the Razer Blade Stealth or go look at the Razer Blade 14. Don't come here for this, you know, this type of machine. This is for people who want to do productivity. And the 90 hertz is not going to help you in productivity. I, it pains me to say it, believe me, because I'm the one who said it in the video, right? But here we finally have one. I can't really tell the difference. But if you clock it down from 90 to 60, you might be able to squeeze out an extra 10% of battery life, which is great. So now it makes the battery even better on this device, and it was already quite good. So you get a good display uh, with some flexibility. You get the Windows Hello to log in, and you get the 90 hertz refresh rate. The keyboard is another absolute highlight. This keyboard is wonderful to type on, absolutely wonderful. And when you take a laptop form factor from 13 or 13.4 inch display uh, to something that's 14 inches, and we're talking thin bezel, you know, form factor, so not like the older Macs, as old as last year, you get way more space to type, and it makes for a better typing experience inherently. Now, in addition to that, Lenovo's keys are fantastic. They're nice and wide, they have a good shape to them, there's good travel, you know, I don't know what the travel is, this many millimeters, what are the BS people use, it feels good to type on, I made very few mistakes. It's wonderful. Now, the backlighting is only two-stage, so just keep that in mind. You can get some effective backlighting. Uh, in fact, I'll demonstrate it for you now. Okay, I think it automatically turned on there for a second. That's the max brightness. It doesn't look good from this angle, but if you're in a typing angle, it looks fantastic. All right, go ahead and turn that off. So, good keyboard. The trackpad is okay. It's, it's nice, it's a good size, it feels pretty good to glide on and all that kind of stuff. I didn't really make a whole lot of mistakes, but you know, it's, it's not going to blow you away. It's a 7 out of 10 standard solid trackpad. The trackpad could have been a whole lot worse, which would have broken the value proposition on this machine. Okay, so the display does go down almost flat, you know, 180 degrees as they say, but uh, you may not use that. You may not use that. Okay, let's talk about like design and aesthetics, okay? So right here on the lip, it says 7 Series, which I absolutely love. This is a nice, just beautiful touch on this device. 
Now when you close it, it has a satisfying close. You're not going to find any wobble or wiggle on the display. There's some level of magnetism happening here, nothing that will blow you away. In terms of input output or I.O., we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a charging status light. On the other side, we have a USB 3.2 port, you know, the USB-A, headphone jack, and a power button with another uh, LED status indicator. This one's letting you know that it's in sleep mode. Something cool about Intel Evo certification and the way that this was pre-configured by Lenovo out of the gate is that this machine will just sleep all the time. And you don't really lose a lot of power. Like, so overnight, you might lose 8%, right? Like if you were at 99.1%, uh, you know, you wake up at 98.9% .9 or something. You can't even really tell. Like, it's tenths of a percent is what you would lose. That's how I should have said it. Okay, now, the lid is a really nice anti, I would say, anti-fingerprint uh, display or uh, chassis. I mean, that's not official. That's just me. Like, you really don't get fingerprints on this. And, uh, you know, I'll eat my breakfast or something and be on this machine. And I try to keep my hands very clean because I'm kind of that way. And I don't really see anything happening here. On the back, you have a really nice honeycomb grill. Uh, the fans, I've never heard them spin up, ever, right? Except for when I first booted this thing up very first time, it was updating Windows 11. The fans were running, and it was not loud at all. This is otherwise a silent machine. Now, I do tend to run it in better battery mode. I, I don't really crank it in performance mode. Something very cool, though, let me just log in real quickly, about this display, or sorry, about this machine, is if you hold down the function key and you press Q, the machine will jump into different battery management modes. This is pre-configured by Lenovo. It's not a, a Windows thing. It's purely a Lenovo thing. And they do this on multiple devices, like the Legion laptops, for example, the gaming laptops. I believe that's where it started. So that's a wonderful thing if you want to have some quick control. You go to high performance, you go to automatic mode. There's some settings, Lenovo Vantage, to let you even personalize it further. So it's very, very cool. Now, 1200 bucks at Costco for this laptop. That's a screaming deal, guys. You get an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, a full one terabyte SSD, and it performs like a champion. I love this laptop. I, I really love this laptop. It has so much on paper as well as, you know, in present that it's easy for me to recommend this, particularly since you can go to Costco and get it, and I'm sure you can find it elsewhere too. Certainly Lenovo's website, there's tons of sales all the time. The full retail price is $1,400 at Lenovo, but at Costco it's $1,200, so I'm sure they would price match it, and you can get it price matched elsewhere too. But here's what's holding it back for me. I was really hyped about this, guys. I totally was. But I did a day one video because I was so hyped up. I should probably never do that again. The reflections on this display, they, that's what kills it for me. There is so much going on here. Now, you can get some aftermarket stuff here. It's going to be a little noisy. I apologize. You get something like this. I picked this up from Amazon, but I have not opened it and applied it because I, I don't like the, the way that it all sort of uh, spells out here on the back. Like, you know, it says 1080p resolution is what it's for, and this isn't a 1080p, but I did find the 14-inch anti-glare. Anyway, and there might be some others, too, out there that you can find, but... That might be better, but anyhow, since I decided to return this, I felt also it was there's no purpose in putting on that film. And I don't want film, all right? <laughs> I don't want to put film on my display because I want to get the full resolution. I don't want anything in the way. I just want to get my my display to be, you know, the way that the, the manufacturer intended. Right? I want to get as close to those colors as possible. I should mention before I wrap up that the color representation is fantastic, and hopefully that does sort of come through here. Oh, I should also talk a little more about performance, and then I'll go back to the display, the reflections, and stuff like that. I mean, you can see my camera light back here. It's mostly not dead on. Now it's dead on. But the, I'll, I'll put the Razer book next to it, and you can see side by side. But before I get to that, speed, performance. This is in better battery mode right now. Like, I am like, save battery. Like, let's save the world with battery. Bam. I'm going to open up Word. Boom. Just like that. That is lightning fast performance. And, you know, you can open multiple windows that way. I'll open up Chrome. Bam, right? There I am, GWW, open like lightning. And if you just hammer away and open a bunch of tabs, it's going to be fine. Like you're going to have good performance on this laptop. Now, the reason that I always show the productivity apps is it goes back to that question of who is this for? And it's very easy. A lot of people say, oh, just get the M1 MacBook Pro, right? Or get the Mac MacBook Air, right? That's a thousand bucks. And it's got the Apple Silicon and blah, blah, blah. Look, man, let me tell you guys something. I had an M1 MacBook Pro. I sold it. I bought my wife an M1 MacBook Air. She's using it. 
She's a little frustrated, but, you know, mostly that's because she doesn't use PC computers very often, right? So she's not used to operating systems. But let me tell you something about how this compares to the M1 MacBook Pro. Not the new fancy ones that are $2,000 plus, but the $1,200 M1 MacBook Pro. This kills it when it comes to productivity, right? If you're doing Office apps, right? Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, Outlook, right? You're in that whole OneNote, you're in that whole Microsoft ecosystem. This guy blows it out of the water, right? And they're priced the same. If you're going to be using Chrome, OneDrive, all of that, champ. This thing is a champ. Never slowed down on me, never never throttled on me, even though it's you know, a more powerful version than the CDI 7 CPU and the Razorbook 13 or the Dell XPS 13. This sucker just went at it, right? Never had any problems with performance. The M1 MacBook Pro, it struggles, even though Microsoft has written most of those applications to be supportive of the M1 silicone. Those, it takes six to nine, sometimes 10 seconds to open a Word document or even just Word itself from scratch, you know, totally out of memory, just open it up on the M1 Mac. Now, I did go into Best Buy and I tested the new $2,000 MacBook Pro 14 inch and it does open Word snappy, very snappy. I didn't time it, but I would say two and a half seconds tops, right? It was lightning fast. But I'm not going to drop or recommend anybody drops $2,000 to open Word and do productivity. Those laptops are, they're wonderful, they're definitely efficient, but they are for people who want to do you know, video editing and music creation and you know all the people with the nice fancy hair, they buy those laptops. But people who just need to get their work done, <laughs> they, buy, they buy Lenovo and these types of laptops. Alright, so let's go back to the display. I'm going to log into my Razorbook 13 put them side by side. Now. I will do a full review on the Razorbook 13, I promise, okay? I love the Razorbook 13. I'm so glad that they fixed the keyboard on this thing. All right. So I'm going to do my best to show you how the, the reflections are kind of going on here. So I'm going to take, I'm going to turn my light off. All right. And I'm going to fire up the flashlight on my phone, okay? So here's, the, here's my phone. Hello? All right. Here we go. See that? All right. Makes sense. Can you see how, you see that difference? Much brighter. This isn't a scientific test, guys, but I'm doing my best here, <laughs> all right? Uh, if you don't want to take my word for it, you could just take my word for it, right? I could just be like, hey, I'm a YouTube reviewer, and trust me, the display is very glossy. I'm trying to show you something here to demonstrate that it's more glossy. And with my personal test, the way I did it, is I sat inside my home next to a window, right, with the window you know, facing the display, and you could see, it, you know, the birds flying in the background, the clouds. I mean, it's very reflective to the point where it's eye straining, right? You have to turn the brightness all the way up to compensate. Now, with the Razor Book, when I had it, you know, on my lap as well, I didn't have that problem, right? It just it has this anti-reflective coating, which is great. But as you can see very clearly here, at least I hope it's clear. The display, they're both 16 by 10 aspect ratios, much higher resolution, 2.8K here, 1200P, so it's double over here. But the thing is that you get more screen real estate at 14 inches than you would at 13.4 inches. And that gives you way more room on the keyboard. Hopefully you can see the difference here. So it's a bigger, more spacious keyboard and a bigger trackpad. Uh, but, you know, I, I like the trackpad on the Razorbook 13 better personally. So anyhow, it's a very difficult decision to find a laptop you're just going to roll with for two plus years. And, you know, the way I'm wired, if I keep a laptop a year, it's like a miracle, right? It's just the way I am. But, uh, you know, if the Razorbook 13 becomes too eye straining, you know, I would go back to this guy and maybe try some of those anti-reflective coatings. I mean, it's worth a shot. Or perhaps the upcoming Carbon 7 with the AMD processor that should release any day now from Lenovo. Maybe that one will have a matte display or an anti-reflective coating. So, okay. A lot of talk, a lot of stuff. Let's wrap it up. Here's the deal, guys. This is an awesome laptop. It truly, truly, truly is. And if you're looking for something to get your work done, right, office, suite, productivity, Chrome, and it, you want good battery life, light. I mean, this thing is thin, guys. It's thin. It's under 0.67 inches, so it's very thin. It's super light, easy to travel with. I mean, no problem at all, especially with the foot on the back. You can just sort of grab it from the rear like this, and then you can, you know, walk down the street or wherever you're going with it. This is a guy. This is a great laptop for that. If you're going to be doing some outdoor work, I would avoid it because of the glare. If you have, if you have sensitivity to glare on glass displays, then I would definitely think twice before buying this. But at the end of the day, 
Lenovo has created a, a very rare device. There aren't many devices with that panel. There is another one that I saw. I believe it's a, it's a Chinese brand or something. Uh, somebody was reviewing it, Just Josh or one of those guys. And it had a very similar display, 2.8, 16 by 10, 90 hertz refresh and all that. But I don't know about the glare because it wasn't covered. But anyhow, I like it. It's just not one that I'm going to be holding on to, unfortunately. So I hope you found this helpful. More stuff coming soon. In fact, we're doing some giveaways so keep your eyes open on the channel for giveaway information. Bunch of products from Lenovo. So, all right. Thanks a lot, folks. Cheers.